I think the two things that I would really like to pick your brain about is um, one is how to be a self-developing jazz musician. Like today? Yeah, today, just in general, in, in terms of how to keep motivated, how to create a routine that's going to keep you motivated without deflating you. Right. You know, right. Yeah. Um, sort of along those routes. And then yeah. also, too, I want to pick your brain on what your approach is to teaching jazz improv. You know, from like the ground up, so that you, so that way, I want I want to make sure my students have a solid foundation. You know, when they go on to the next level. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I've got a, I've got some great things to say about all those topics. So. Perfect. And if you see me looking down, that's just me typing notes. So. Okay. Yeah. Cool. No worries, man. Um, I do want to touch on trumpet at the beginning. We'll get it. Let's out do it. Way. Yeah. Um, so really quickly, I'll just tell you what I do and I can talk to you quickly because you're a trumpet player and you understand yep. uh, the language. Um, so I just, I start on the mouthpiece and I start really slow, um, kind of like low pressure, kind of trying to make a nice buzz, you know, nothing crazy. And this is an ideal warm up. Keep in mind everything that I'm saying. It's yeah. 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 Ideal situation. Yeah. Totally. Uh, in an ideal situation, meaning that I would have like an hour to rest after this, at yep. least, mm-hmm. right? Um, so this is like my everyday maintenance that I try to do. And, you know, depending on what I have going on, it may vary. It may be longer, it may be shorter, usually shorter if it varies. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, so I do long tones. I play on a concert F for a while, get that settled. And then I do a series of lip slurs very slowly. And I end on the highest partial. Um, so the first lip slur that I do is from the G in the staff down to low C. Yeah. Next, and then C in the staff. And I end on that high C. So you're just ending. And I'm holding the C as long as I can, right? I'm making that note the long tone. Of sure. The, mm-hmm. And I do that all the way down the seven positions chromatically down to F sharp, right? And then I move up a partial, and I do this uh, up to the high, uh, up to the E. And I make that my long tone, right? Yeah. Put down the chromatic series. And then I move up one more partial to where the last... much slower than I'm doing right now yeah. uh, for an example and I go all the way down the chromatic series so by the time it's over I play a lot of long tones you know because I I when I say long tones I I literally mean like I try to Turn do that it as long yeah I, mean, I do it as long as I can I try to like kind of force a few seconds I'm not like trying to like kill myself or anything <laughs> but like I'm trying to like extend the note as long as I can with a good sound uh, because it's a no pressure situation and it's practice, right? Yeah. So you're just kind of working out, and so every time you like spit out a few more seconds, it's like it's kind of like uh, you don't have to spit that out the next time. It's just kind of yeah. you know, it's get longer, right? Mm-hmm. So I do that, and then I do those same loop slurs but faster mm-hmm. down the same chromatic series, and I by the end of it. Hopefully this is not a disaster because I played a lot yesterday and I haven't played a whole lot today. <laughs> yeah. By the end of it, I'm doing the lip slurs at about this, you know, at, at uh, 105 beats per minute at 16 notes. And uh, I'm trying to, I, I won't put you through the pain of listening to a metronome, but I do do it. Right, right. Metronome. so 
forth. But the metronome will really keep you honest on that one. Sure. Um, sure. Okay, so those are the lip slurs, the like lip flexibility exercises. Now, if at any time I'm tired, I will take a break. I'll take three, five minutes and just chill, do something else for a minute, and then come back. So now I've done all my lip slurs. I'm moving on to tonguey. And I will just, you know, the Clark Studies exercise? Yeah. I, I will uh, tongue every, you know, every note and um, play 105 beats per minute, 16th notes. Uh, and I will do it in all 12 keys, starting from C in the staff down to C in the staff. Okay. It's about, it's about this bad. Cal State Fullerton and um, you know I wasn't really happy and I worked my ass off you know this one semester and then I go into my jury and 
the work that I had put in for all those 16 weeks did not come up, did not show up. And I didn't feel like I was being supported by my teachers, you know, and so I decided, you know, I'm not going to play trumpet. I just like put it down. Uh, so I put it down for the whole summer, you know, a couple months, and then I come back and do it. Yeah. You know the you know the, the story then. Yeah. Yeah. So you know after after that I was you know it's like all right well you know I knew this was to happen if I were to ever pick it back up you know so. Yeah. Um, hey, what do you um do you work on double tonguing, triple tonguing a lot? Is like is that practical in what you do? You know. In my professional life, it's not really practical. There's right. not a whole lot of call for it. I mean, it's fun, but, you know, I want to, yeah. Right. Um, but recently, you know, when quarantine first started, a buddy of mine, trumpet player friend, um, you know, where everybody started making these videos, yeah. recording at home, I think. So we were going to do Bugler's Holiday. Oh, cool. All right. And, uh, you know, it's double tonguing central. Yeah. Um, and, and I had the third part i think and like it's like low double tongue like like d's like low yes. d's and it's like really soft <laughs> <laughs> man it was so humbling man. yeah um, okay yeah um, but no i i usually don't you know i had to for something like that mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it, it came back to me quicker or quicker than i thought but at the same time i got tired really fast sure. yeah no, absolutely. So, okay, cool. Not something yeah. that I worked on a lot. No. Yeah. Totally. Um, yeah, so, you know, that's, that's kind of, you know, the trumpet in a nutshell. It sounds like you've, you know, been through uh, more than enough trumpet battle to know uh, the deal with it. Um, I would say that it's not really important to do the same exact exercises every day as far as routine is concerned. Sure. I think it's like a, it's a, it's a principle. I would imagine it like develops over it time, does. you it's know? Changes, right. Like this, this is something that I've come up with over, you know, however many years. Mm -hmm. um, but, and it does change from like season to season. You know, sometimes it'll, instead of doing just a triad, I'll add like another partial, you know, something. Okay, like, yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't matter that the point is lift flexibility, you know, starting slow, getting faster, and then, the, you know, and then moving up in partials. If you want to, you can keep going if you feel comfortable. Sure. You know, and, and the partials, I don't feel comfortable ever, especially, like, in my warm-up routine. By the time I'm there, I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to stop right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but okay, let's uh, let's let's switch gears so we don't run out of time yeah. before before we get to your questions. I want to spend some time on them. So repeat to me um, uh, what what you wanted to talk about again. Okay, so um, I guess the first one that we can we can go over is um, what's your approach on teaching improv in terms of creating those foundations, you know, especially for Maybe somebody who's just starting out, you know. Um, yeah, like um, someone that would be going to your high school. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like a lesson on, like a lesson on how to teach improv. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I do these. You know, I come to, I, I do lectures and and uh, master classes at universities and stuff. And when I get the chance, I like to have like a rhythm section kind of set up and have some students who are, you know, players that will play with me and I can use, I can kind of like use them as like, for example, situations, sure. you know? Um, but as far as like getting like a, a grasp on improvisation as a beginner, um, I think that ear training is very important. Okay. Training. I think that, uh, beginning, if you haven't already, begin a relationship with a piano or a keyboard. Okay. Um, yes, those two things alone. Um, it's going to take you far, I'm sure. Those two things alone will take you far. Uh, it's just, just as far as like improvising. I mean, I, I started like messing around on a piano when I was maybe like four or five years old. You know? Right. And I didn't really know 
what I was doing, obviously. I was just kind of messing around. But when I was taught what to do, it um, it translated pretty quickly in my brain, sure. you know. Um, and a unique situation that happened with me, um, I, I had a piano in my house, and my parents got it tuned. It was a very old piano. It was my grandfather's. And piano tuner came over and he tuned it and I guess he tuned it as, as good as he could have without breaking the strings. Okay. But he could only get up to B flat. Like the key of B flat. So okay. when I played a C on the trumpet it was a C on the piano. Oh, wow. So okay. in a way that was... either him or the universe was like helping me out. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Because right. Now I had an acoustic piano that Lucky I didn't dude. To, like transpose, <laughs> kind of, and so yeah. I knew. Yeah, I had a relationship with the piano, and I would start. These are good things to that I tell kids to do. Um, is yeah. as far as ear training goes, um, take nursery rhymes that you have been hearing your whole life, and they're ingrained into your brain, and. Try to play them in keys that you're not comfortable with. Just pick a note at random and, and, and try and play like Twinkle Twinkle Little sure. Star or something that you um, are very familiar with, something that you, that is ingrained into your mind. You don't have to think about yep. it. It's like picking a note and then using your ear to go to the next note, you know, and practicing that way. Um, I used to do a, a pretty fun thing. People thought I was nuts. In college, I was uh, in the practice room, and I would do the Star Spangled Banner. Um, like different but, I would, keys. but I would switch keys every phrase, okay. like, yeah. every measure or something. Right. So, I don't know if I can do it. Especially as a horn player, right. uh, improvising is um, it, it's so essential. And the sooner you learn that, the better. Um, there are people that go their whole careers without learning that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know that they, they you know can play the shit out of a blues in F, and then if you say okay blues in A, they sound like a third grader. Right, and you're like. That's weird. You just never, you never did the work. Right. You and know, see, I feel like I'm, I'm sort of at that point where I'm like hitting a threshold in which I can get to the next level, but that's what I feel about like stuff in hard keys, you know, or like in weird keys, like if, you know, a singer called a tune or something like that, would right. I be able to do, you know, or if like somebody called, uh, well, you know, the point to, is, you know, where you want to be, the goal is to not have any weird keys, right? Right, right. We don't want to have any weird keys. We, you know, if we know autumn leaves, we should know that 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 phrase. I know autumn leaves. Are you there? I think you're frozen. Yeah, no, I'm there. Yeah. You were just being extremely. I, mean, I was being super. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah I was um, focused. No, all right, here we go. <laughs> 
Um, the, you know, the phrase, I know autumn leaves, you know, theoretically should mean like, you know, yeah, what key? Okay, got it. You know what I mean? Like, um, and how you get there really quicker than any other way that I know is, is developing a, a relationship with the piano and sitting down and looking at the intervals. Got looking it. at the intervals, seeing them at the same time as you're hearing them, mm -hmm. being able to play multiple notes at a time, and hearing the actual chords, one note on top of one another. You know, as a horn player, you can only play one note at a time. Right. And, and you're not looking at anything visually while you're playing. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you have your eyes closed, crying out loud. Right. Um, so... I think it's one of, I call it the motherboard, you know, of uh, instruments, the keyboard. Sure. Is, uh, and learning, that one of the best things that uh, I ever did was learn that song, Donna Lee, in all 12 keys. Oh, that's cool. All right. You know that song? Yeah. It's basically just like a solo, right? Like it's yeah, it's yeah, it's just a bunch oh, of, yeah. Um, so, you know, my trumpet teacher was like, He's like, I want you to learn Donnelly in all 12 keys this semester. I was like, you got to be out of your mind. Like, you can't. I was like, you can't do that. He was like a lead trumpet player. You know? Yeah. And I was taking, like, technique lessons with him. And it was, it was great. His name is Jay Saunders. Played lead trumpet with Stan Kent. Okay. Is he related to Carl Saunders? No. Got it. But okay. I do know Carl. Carl's okay. great. Um, anyway. Uh, he was like, yeah, I want you to learn Donnelly in all 12 keys. I was like, You're, you can't play. He was like, oh. like <laughs> yeah. that's not the point. Right. Uh, like, that's not the point. I want you to learn it, to, you know, because it'll benefit you. And, man, it really did. Because it, I feel like it elevated my bebop vocabulary by, like, a, I don't know, like 80% or something. You know, just learning all those lines and getting comfortable in uh, being able to improvise in, in the key of, B concert, the changes of Donna Lee. Right. to uh, the point I want to talk about with improvisation and with young people it's very hard to get it across because there's so much learning to do before you can actually reach this state of mind that I'm talking about right. um, and that is when you improvise it's only happened to me like a handful of times in mm. my life or, you know I don't know thousands of shows um but it's like a, like an aural bliss a moment of aural bliss where just like everything is kind of just flowing and creatively you're there like technique your technique is there you're not really having to try too hard it's just kind of like happening um that is the benefit of practice at home so much to where you can turn that brain off, the brain that you use while you're practicing, you're able to turn that part off and use those skills while the creative side of your brain takes over. And it's muscle memory is all it is, that's right? pretty much, yeah. yeah. But that's, uh, I, I think it was John Coltrane, but I may have misquoted him. He said, like, you know, you should learn 
you should do all your homework and learn all of your scales and arpeggios and everything you know at home outside of the bandstand and then when you get to the bandstand when you improvise you should forget all of it. right try to forget all of it. yeah so trying to explain that to someone who's never improvised before it's kind of like if they have no desire to improvise uh which a lot of kids don't i know yeah it's kind of yeah. um uh, and you know, it's 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 a, it's a weird thing with uh, young people that like you know I've been in certain certain situations where kids do not want to in, improvise, and it's like, well, I'm not gonna make you play right. if if you feel uncomfortable. That's that's even weirder. Um, so you know, whatever, that's fine. But um, to try and encourage them to actually just express themselves and not think about music and notes and rhythms at first is a cool way to get them excited about improvisation. And I did an experiment once uh, randomly that I'll never forget and I use it all the time. I um, I was playing with this group of high schoolers in Fort Worth, Texas mm-hmm. um, and I was like the guest artist or whatever we were rehearsing and I was kind of doing like a master class and I had my little group of a small group of students, right? Yeah. And I was playing trumpet, and I was like, okay, I'm going to do an experiment. We're going to just jam to, like, a funky groove in G minor. That's all I'm going to say, right? Those are the only guidelines. And these musicians were high school musicians, but they were, like, the most advanced ones that okay. were. Right? Yeah. So they had uh, they had a... They had the highest sense of what was going on in sure. the room, I think, right? And um, I started playing, you know, G minor funk. I was like, I just counted it off. And, you know, they started freaking you know, whatever. And I started playing, like, just whatever, you know. You know, just like some smooth stuff yeah. or whatever. And I was playing pretty inside. And I was just chilling. We were improvising. We were grooving. It was cool. And then I was like, okay. And I cut him off. I was like, I'm going to count it off again. And I want you guys to all watch what happens. <laughs> and I counted it off. Same exact thing. I was like, G minor funk. And I just started making the most strange noises on my instrument that I possibly could. You know, like, yeah. I mean, not even notes, just like gross, right. just not pleasant stuff. And mm-hmm. I was, I mean, I was trying to be creative with it, you know, but it was, I wasn't really like making wasn't playing notes i was just improvising with sounds really and um and i was being very sporadic you know i was being very loud and deliberate i would point at the drummer and try and interact with him and he had he would he would have he had no choice but to but to like interact you know what i mean like and it was so funny because as soon as i started playing that way immediately everybody in the room but everybody in the band, especially mm-hmm. the, the most advanced musicians, re- immediately reacted uh, subconsciously. They couldn't control it. You know what I mean? Um, and that was a cool thing for the kids to see because I told them, I was like, I wasn't even playing notes. You know, yeah. I was just, you know, improvising in a way that I was trying to you know, communicate with these musicians. Uh, and I did. Yeah, sure. You know, and I, and, and I didn't say anything. The only guideline was um, G minor funk, you know. So, with these students that you're referring to, how, how old are they? What's their story? The ones that you're actually uh, considering in this question. Right? Sure. Um, so, what... I, I'm picturing a, a few different scenarios. One is like one that you're talking about. Um, the other one is where, let's just say they're in middle school and they're like the top of their class or whatever, and they're the jazz band, right? So it's like they're sort of the top musicians of the middle school and they're in the jazz band, but they don't know anything about soloing. They can read pretty all right, you know, they know how to play in tune, but they don't know about soloing, and they're scared to solo. Mm -hmm. Have you ever played them any early jazz recordings? 
Yeah, like I got the gig and I started playing. I started putting a lot of recordings in front of them, and so a lot of them were, you know, well, some of them were early. Well, how early, you know? I mean, I was just uh, trying to reference like um, more, like the simpler, like the more simple form stuff, like blues or um, or stuff like that. Like, um, yeah, like. Yeah, I think yeah, I did I did put in a fair share of that stuff too. Yeah. Cool, cool. Um, do you have a rhythm section that can play together? Yeah. Yeah. You. Yeah. That is that is good. That helps. Yeah, I lucked out. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, is there any horn player in particular that stands out in the group per se? As an improviser? Uh, yes. And you know what's funny about it is that that one that I'm thinking of, he's like, he's like super scared. I'm like, dude, you can do it. You know, like you can do it. Like you just did it. He's like, no, I don't want to do it, man. Like, oh man, you know. So it's like one of those things. But let's just say if he could play, you know, or if he if he is down to play, you know, like you know. Then I would have him. I would I would start everyone on a twelve bar blues form. Yeah, that's okay. The first, that's the first uh, you know song that we would try and learn. And I would I would stick to the most simple chord changes as possible. So four bars of the one chord, right. two bars of the four chord, two bars of the one chord, one bar of the five chord. So on five four, four one, one. one. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. So. So that'd be, that, that'd be 12 bars. And um, I would have them all learn the arpeggios of each of those chords. Okay. Uh, now, this this is getting ahead of yourself if your students aren't very familiar with their major scales, A, mm -hmm. um, and aren't really, like, don't really have a, a, a concept of what triads are or actual chords or any sort of music theory knowledge. You know, because when gotcha. I was in school, I remember not having any knowledge of what that was until I was in high school. Definitely, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, okay. So if, if you were trying to um, reach a younger person in middle school, I would say almost it, it, it's more beneficial to try and, you know, if you have a rhythm section that can play the 12 bar blues form, a lot of like one note rhythmic uh, improvisation mm -hmm. is very good. Okay. Because uh, you can play one note over the whole blues form and it's going to sound okay, depending on what the note is. Um, okay. Yeah. You know? Uh, and you can be very rhythmic with it. I think I think you have to start somewhere. And if they don't know, you know, any music theory or what, uh, you know, what the third of C major is, then you got to go back and you yeah, have to go back and, and teach them the basics there. Right. Um, you know, get them get them to where they can tell you what a C dominant seventh chord is. Mm -hmm. Because if you're not there, then you then you we can't, can't really, really go on, right? <clears throat> right. I mean, you can improvise without knowing that stuff. Right. If you have a rhythm section that's there to play a twelve bar blues, yeah. Those guys are those guys or girls are solid. Then you could be like, you know, okay, here's what we're gonna do today, just to kind of get ourselves to improvise. Is these guys are gonna play a twelve bar blues, and we're just gonna take one note solos. And pass it around and just kind of like <clears throat> get get some sort of rhythmic ideas going or something like that. Yeah, you know? totally. Okay, that's, but, yeah, that makes sense for sure. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, sweet. Thank you. Uh, maybe we can switch gears a little bit. Um, sure. Maybe if you want to hear me play a little bit and then we can go from there. I would love that. Yeah. Um, do you have something prepared or just what or anything in mind? Um, I figure well, I figure I can play Donna maybe play Donna Lee over a couple choruses and then Sounds great. Yeah, we'll see what we'll see what happens. Alright, see I'm gonna I'm gonna sound test this first. Go ahead.
Are you hearing that all right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm living in an apartment, so I gotta use a, I gotta use a mute. That's all good. Probably sounds better on this iPhone. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Get some water real quick. So, like, I, you already know the tune, so I'm just gonna improvise. Sounds good. Okay. seven times before he passed away unfortunately um, yeah. so he's a major one of mine um, another one of course Blue Mitchell you know Freddie Hubbard Miles Davis of course um, Chet Baker is great um, well okay let me ask you this do you ever practice with just a metronome playing tunes not as much as I should. I have found that that is a very cool way to... It's kind of like swinging with two bats at the on-deck circle, you know what okay, I mean? Okay, yeah. Like, you kind of like... You put the training wheels back on when you go up on stage because... Mm -hmm. You got the backing track. <laughs> right, right. Well, but I just, you know, I use the metronome and I just put it on two and four. Uh -huh. And on a tune like Donna Lee, I will simply try and just outline the changes, but not like in a, a complex, like linear way, but more of like a rhythmic, like guide tones sort of way. So there's going to be a lot of thirds, a lot of sevenths on downbeats. Um, see if I can give you an example. But uh, metronome will be on two and four. One, two, one, two, one, two. Thank you. 
basically you want to get to where like what kind of like what I was doing on the last course where you're just kind of improvising at will not really thinking about the changes but you're so uh, comfortable with the key and all of the chords because you spent the time at the piano right. and all the extensions and you're landing on those thirds and sevenths at the right times um, you know that's when you get to start like having a lot of fun yeah because you can kind of go you know you hear people play outside of the chord changes a lot of times it's right. like and kind of go in and out whenever you want but I think before you can go out I think you have to like really really hone in on practicing playing inside the changes yeah no totally to be able to properly play out because the coolest part about playing out is getting back in <laughs> <laughs> So if you can't ever get back in and you're just playing out the whole time, like, I, you know. Yeah, right, right. So what's the point? Um, <laughs> yeah. So totally. I would say, you know, the next tune that you want to learn or spend time on, like, obviously you've spent some time on Don Lee, um, after you play it in all 12 keys, of course. Right. Um, then, you know, pick another tune and just put the metronome on two and four. And it, but you have to learn the changes, you know. Uh, How's your relationship with the piano? When you learn tunes, do you learn them on the piano? Do you sit down, or do you just learn them on trumpet? Um, well, I don't have a piano at home, which yeah. I, which I should. But I yeah, I don't have a piano at home. So um, typically, what I'll well, when I was in college. Um, definitely more so I was like at the piano doing tunes um, you know listening to harmonies throughout the chart and everything um, but more so now it's like yeah I'm learning on trumpet you know yeah. arpeggiating I mean, on trumpet I mean that's cool too as long as you know obviously you know you know the chords and stuff to where you practice them on trumpet I like practicing arpeggios much more than I like pra practicing um, scales yeah. yeah. Um, I, feel, I mean, you know, when you think about it, it's like the arpeggio of the chord spells out the whole chord and all of the good notes. Yeah. yeah. And like, if you you fill in all the notes in between, you'll get some sort of scale, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, but like, uh, to me, practicing the arpeggios again before you start improvising freely over a tune like Donnelly. Put the metronome back on two and four. One, two, one, two, three. Yeah. Um, that's where you want to be, you know. 
as far I mean, I didn't do a great job, but you want you want to be even more fluid than that, you know, like in, in all all twelve. Sure. All twelve. So I, I think if you did that, you'll probably naturally get bored of playing, you know, tunes like that, but with your harmonic knowledge that you learn from doing that. Right. It's gonna make you wanna play all different kinds of stuff over all different kinds of music. Absolutely, which actually leads me to my uh, next question, which when we practice, or at least when I practice, especially jazz, it's hard for me to balance the things, practicing the things that I'm good at and the things that I'm not good at. So, you know, I mean, I like to jam, you know, I like to put on a backing track and just, you know, solo and everything, but... You know, I don't really like to practice what I'm not good at. You know, <laughs> so like, how do I how do I balance that without um, getting too deflated? You know. Yeah, I remember this question from the beginning. It's a good question. Um, you know, that's a tough question, especially now that we're all at home, um, because you know, if this thing wasn't going down, I would say, like, you know, just maybe go out and hear some music and get inspired. Um, maybe checking out music online is, like, the next the next way to do that. Right. Not the same, obviously, mm-hmm. but, um, you know, staying inspired to, to improvise. Um, I totally know what you're saying when you're like, I don't like practicing what I'm not good at because A, I don't think anybody does, but like that clicks with me because I used to do this thing where I, I could not get through my warm up routine. Yeah. I couldn't get through it. I could not focus long enough to get through 20 or 30 minutes of playing trumpet without, you know, screwing around on, on Donna Lee or whatever, right. you know? Um, and then I had that whole wisdom teeth thing and I was like alright I have to focus on trumpets and nothing else for the next like month or whatever. so I did it kind of re refocused me on on that but um, improvising to me to me it, it, it's not any fun if you don't do the homework like all the shit that we're talking about theoretically Harmony. I mean, we didn't even get that deep into uh, harmony only because I heard you play, and and I know that you understand it. It's a matter of you practicing and repeating and right. learning right. something in all twelve keys and doing the homework that I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. Because once you do all that homework, you get to a point where you play with people who are on that same level, and it's like, wow, you don't even have to play like anything fancy or cool for this shit to groove. Right. Everyone is so comfortable. <clears throat> I, I had a master class with Bob Reynolds the other day online and I was like, we were talking about the same thing and, and I, I said at one point, I was like, I guess you have to be, you have to practice getting comfortable when you perform, you can be comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, totally. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, you have to, you have to get comfortable to, to be able to play comfortable. But I, I said it in a way cooler way. Y- yeah, no, I get that for sure. Uh, I, you know, the point is, is just to do all that stuff, all this guide tones, all this, all this deep harmonic knowledge that you can get sitting at the keyboard and transcribing someone like Bill Evans. Right. Yeah, I mean, like, it, you know, going back to my my trumpet upbringing, you know, I had a I had a really great trumpet teacher um, who taught me great things about trumpet fundamentals and trumpet technique, and he showed me how to be a developing trumpet player, you know, which is great. Uh, but his foundations and what 
he instilled in me were, were foundations in classical music, which is totally fine. I loved it and everything. It was great. Um, but I don't have that same thing in the jazz realm, if you know what I'm saying. You know, I, I don't have that like, oh yeah, I can just go do this and this and this and this, and I'm like, I'm gonna have a bunch of fun and like, you know, it's you know, it's not to that point quite yet. It's like, oh shit, like I gotta do my, I gotta right. do my. Donna Lee in the key of C sharp. Here we go. Let's, you know. Well, I mean, also, you know, when I was a lot younger, I used my idols for inspiration with, like, transcriptions and stuff like that. And that, to me, was fun. I haven't, you know, transcribed seriously like that in a long time. But, like, Mm -hmm. you know, you also, like, have to have a little bit of a passion for it. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I'm sure you do. Yeah. But, like, um, like it's it's a thing where like if you're sitting there like once you like transcribe a cannonball Adderley solo and you're like playing along with it on trumpet like barely hanging on yeah. you know and you did the work and it's like man you know how much you know how much better you are right right you know how much better you are now that you did that like that's that's crazy you know and like people just won't do that mm-hmm. ever and they'll be musicians their whole lives. Mm-hmm. But they won't ever have sat down with a trumpet and played along with the Cannonball Adderley solo until their fingers fall off and their face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just... I guess, you know, not to be cliche, but it's like, you know, if it was easy, everybody would play jazz all the time and it would sound good. And you would enjoy listening to people playing jazz right, right. Uh, that's the key to me you know like people say you know well, if, it, if it was easy people would people would play jazz all the time i'm like no if it was easy people would, people would enjoy listening to everyone who plays jazz, play jazz. <laughs> right right and people don't enjoy most people by a majority don't enjoy listening to the majority of jazz just as a fact yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, man, I think it's one of those things. I'm just at a at a hurdle right now that that I'm you know going into the next phase of my trumpet life. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, and you know you're in a it's an interesting situation with the pandemic and everything to be in that spot because there are things that are not at your disposal that should normally be right. As like you know, as for everything that's happening in this world, totally. But, uh, yeah just one of the things that comes along with it it's like uh, it's a tough spot to be so man there's gonna be a lot of people coming out of this thing that are have been in the woodshed though you know, oh yeah and, yeah. and just like practice 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 I'm a little scared to be honest with you. <laughs> like man at some point I'm gonna have to spend like a month just like practicing uh, before like people start performing again because people are going to be locked and loaded. Man. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. No, I can, I can only imagine. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I've just been trying to find that, that spark, that, you know, that something that just gives me the, uh, you know what? Let me ask you this, because I just got a spark from it. Um, your home recording setup. Do you have one of those? I don't. No, I use my phone, so. Yeah, man, let me tell you, uh, I just got like an interface and a microphone and some studio monitors, some headphones, a little MIDI controller. Uh, changed my life. Really? Changed my life. Uh, you know, to, you know, you can. It's fun again. You know, it's like play trumpet and hear yourself in like a nice clear tone and like you actually sound good and it's like oh it didn't sound good well I can redo it right so it does yeah totally so, I gotta get into that for sure yeah cool yeah man I think I'm just gonna I mean first step is just gonna be to uh, play this Donna Lee thing in all the 12 keys man and then dude I, I think that's a great spot for you for you in particular to start i think you're ready for that challenge. yeah yeah and it's not too much like you know i could do a key a day or something like that you know it's, yeah and like you know who's gonna be 
who's going to be cracking the whip if you don't have C sharp at the end of the day? Right. You are, right? Right, yeah. So, but no, I think that's a great goal. And like, to be honest, the key of day sounds taxing to me. Sure. Yeah. The key of two days. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. No, I appreciate this lesson, man. I, I, yeah, man. Thank man, you. thank you. You've actually inspired me to like. I was, I was pretty like low energy earlier in the day. I worked early this morning, and then I was at a lull, but you kind of got me back up. So I really appreciate it. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate that. 